In this video, we are going to learn what is chi-square test of independence. So, in this, we are going to learn essentially four things. What is the chi-square test to validate that a particular factor or a variable has impact on another variable or not? Or in another word, the two variables are associated or not? The two variables are dependent or not? The second thing that we are going to do that we are going to get the feel of chi-square formula. Please note the formula that we are going to discuss here is very important because the same concept applies for goodness of fit as well as for contingency table. We are also going to understand what is the degree of freedom and in some circumstances how do you check the strength of dependence or rather I should say the strength of association between a particular variable is or among a set of variable to the dependent variable. So that you can say this particular variable has more Im impact on the dependent variable than another variable. So let us start with the case. So the case is you know let us understand you know if there are a lot of students who are appearing for a particular administrative officer test you know do the factors like gender you know region say north east south west or educational background like you know they are science graduate or they are arts graduate or they are commerce graduate or, or, or let us say there are many there may be many fields like that do these variables make an impact of students passing so essentially what we are trying to say that you know can we say with confidence the student of different gender has different success rate or say a student of different regions say north or east or south or west has different success rate or say student science, arts, commerce graduate has different success rate and this can be repeated for a number of other dimensions let us say age group, uh, let us say height. So, this is what we want to understand. We want to understand the region had any uh, association with success rate or not or pass or fail or not. Gender had any association with success rate or not. Educational background had any association with success rate or not. And in some circumstances, we will like to know that which of the dimension say gender or region or educational background has higher impact on success rate than others. So, these are the three things that we want to understand this is the case. So, let us see let us let us understand uh, let us drill, drill down a bit in, on this one. Let us say that you know among male and female you have 100 male who appeared for the exam, 60 passed the exam and 40 failed. Among female, there are 56 female appeared for the exam, 24 passed and 32 failed. If you see the total number of people who passed are 60 plus 24, 84 and total number of people who failed are 40 plus 32, 72. These are the number of male and female. Now, if you think of a scenario where there was no association, you know, so essentially male and female, the gender had almost no impact on say pass or fail, you know what you would have seen the total pass is 84 among 156 people. So the success rate would have been among the 100 male it would have been 100 into 84 by 156. Similarly the failure you know there are 72 people who have failed out of 156 people. So it would have been 100 into 72 by 156 the fail rate and the same concept would have applied for the female. Now let us do this calculation once again you know just uh, when we calculate and round it up to the uh, so that it becomes an integer what you get is 54, 46, 30 and 24. 26 is coming it, if you do 56 into 72 by 156 that is how you get 26. Now what is the chi-square formula? The chi-square formula is observed minus expected squared by expected. So first let me explain you the calculation and then we will get a feel of the formula. 
So, essentially 60 minus 54, you whole square it, which will essentially become 36 divided by 54, which is the expected number here that you get for one cell. If you do, you know this, let us call this grid as one cell, here there are four cells, 1, 2, 3 and 4. If you do this for all the four cells and then you sum it up, you get 4.24, that is the value of chi square. This is the calculation part. Let us understand what is the concept behind. The concept is essentially if there was, you know, there is no impact of gender, the, the pass or fail could have been easily given by these numbers. So, essentially you know in lieu of 60 you should have expected to get 54, in lieu of 20, 24 you should have expected 30. So, if there was no impact you could have seen numbers very close to expected number. If the numbers are far you know you in general you will feel that you know there is an impact of gender in the success rate. But actually the formula is little more than that. What is that? Let us get a feel of that. To feel the formula, let us understand part by part. So, first let us see the numerator portion. The numerator, let us assume that you know in one case observed is 12, expected was 10. So, the numerator you know will come 12 minus 10 whole square which will be equal to 4. In case 2, let us say it was 15 and the expected was 10. So, the numerator will become 25. Now, if you see the actual difference in the first case 12 minus 10 was 2, in the second case it was 5. So, 2 is to 5 probably the difference is the ratio is 2 is to 1, 5 divided by 2, 2.5. Now, in the second case when you check, take the numerator it is 4 to 25, so it has become more than 6 times. So, what is the impact that the numerator has done? If you see the numerator by very design, it magnifies the impact, it magnifies the impact of you know differences. So, greater the difference, the bigger it makes. You know, if the difference is, you know would have you say it was if it is 11 minus 10, you know it would have been just 1. If it is 13 minus 10, it becomes in lieu of 3, it becomes 9. In your, here it becomes 2 to 4, but 5 becomes 25. So, the farther the number from the expected, the bigger the numerator becomes. That is the first part. So, it does exactly what the magnifying lens does. The second thing it does, it makes it positive. So, it is 12 in lieu of 10 or it is 8 in lieu of 10. Both the things are same because 8 minus 10 would have been minus 2 square 4 and 12 minus 10 is 4. So, essentially it becomes a positive, it makes it a positive number. So, the numerator always becomes a positive number. These are the two impact of the numerator portion. So, what we have understood the numerator magnifies the and magnifies the impact of the difference. The bigger the difference the numerator makes it even bigger. Now, let us understand the second portion. Why we are dividing by the expected number? Let us see one second. You know, in one case, suppose observed was 115 and expected was 110. So, the numerator will become 25. In the second case, let us say the observed is 15 and expected is 10, the numerator will become 25. Now, do you think both the cases are same? No way. If you see the first case, you know, the difference was 115. So, essentially 5 in lieu of 110, which is not even 5%. Whereas in the second case, you know it is 15 in lieu of 10, so it is the difference is actually 50% of what we are expecting. We have to have a mechanism by which we capture the same concept that each captured the moment you divide by the expected value. How? Because you know the moment you divide 25 by 110, it will become just 0.25, whereas 25 divided by 10 will become 2.5 which is as good as 10 times. That is the same it makes you know it, it captures the essence the way percentages you can when you calculate percentage you know it does not matter that you started with 100 or you started with 1000. What you know 10 percent of 100 is 1 sorry 10 percent of 100 is 10 whereas 10 percent of 50,000 is 5,000. Uh, 5, 
so essentially the percentage is independent of the the actual magnitude of the variable now the second thing it makes it independent of the unit and hence makes it comparable why let's understand it why the why comes because if you take the same thing suppose this is a given in meter so 15 minus 10 you know probably 25 but the moment you convert that into centimeter you know it would have become 1500 minus 1000 and you know square so it would have become you know like 2500 uh, square <coughs> which have become a much bigger number but the moment you would have divided by the the uh, the expected value it would have become independent of the unit and hence it makes it comparable so essentially if you see this is magnification this is as good as converting the same thing everything into the percentages impact so then you know the chi square statistics is independent of the variable impact and hence you can use it to compare the strength of variable in one go if the higher the chi square statistics you can say the variable has more association with the dependent variable now let's get a little bit more on the field you know higher the value higher the dependence the variable with higher chi square has higher impact on dependent variable than the variable with lower value of chi square but when do you consider that the chi square statistics is significant for that you need to understand little bit of the degree of freedom so what is degree of freedom let's assume the same case that we uh, considered in this yellow cell you know if suppose you know total male were 100 total female was 56 and suppose you know the total number of people who passed is 84 and total female uh, total people who failed is 72 the moment you know any of these four things you know say one thing you know suppose you know x then you calculate say x like among the male how many people have passed then you immediately know who has failed why because you know the total number is 100 so suppose if you know that okay among male let's say 20 people have passed you immediately know that among male 80 has failed now second thing the moment you know 20 has passed obviously you know you know how many have passed among the female you know because the total number has to be 84 the you know 20 was a wrong number it because if it is 84 it can never be 20 let's take it 30 if the male among the male if 30 has passed then obviously among the female 54 has to pass to make it 84 so the point that i'm trying to make in this whole four cells the moment you know one you know all uh, other three immediately because the sum is already given similarly suppose if there were three into two grid you know science arts and commerce and pass and fail if you know that science there are 70 graduate arts there are 36 graduate and commerce there are 50 and you know 84 people have passed and 72 you essentially need to know r minus 1 c minus 1 so essentially r is here 3 row and column is 2 so 3 minus 1 2 and 2 minus 1 1 so essentially you need to know two things so if you suppose you know this and this you can immediately calculate among science how many failed suppose you know among science you know say 20 20 had passed among science and arts so 20 had passed then obviously you know that 50 had failed among arts if you know 20 had passed immediately you know 16 had failed now you know total 72 people have failed so you can always found that what is the number here you know how many people have passed here so immediately you come to know how many are here so what i'm trying to say that you know in this kind of table which is same as contingency table the degree of freedom is given by r minus 1 into c minus 1 because if you know the value of those many things in this case 3 minus 1 2 into c 2 minus 1 1 so essentially if you know the two value of two cells the other four you can easily decipher because you know the total sum so that's the concept of degree of freedom so why have it i have explained you this because for each degree of freedom the chi square statistics for 95% uh, confidence or say 5% uh, signif uh, 95% uh, sig uh, significance level has been tabulated in uh, statistics books if the value is more than that 
you assume it significant thanks for your time you may subscribe to this channel so that you can get to know about updates time to time thank you